Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my daughter, Kayla, who's camera shy. I know it's crazy. You know? Okay. And I can every time I have the camera on, you're like, no, no. Okay. Anyway. We are, as you can see, driving through, not Mars. It looks like Mars to me because of all the orange rocks and stuff. We're uh, in, actually, Arizona um, on our way. Our next big city, I think, is Albuquerque, New Mexico. And uh, we're just rolling right along. We stopped off in the Grand Canyon, and it was cold. I mean, it was cold. It was colder than a witch's dead. I ain't gonna lie to you. I got up this morning, you know, the last thing I thought, would be I would wake up in Arizona and it's 28 degrees. I, I took the dog out, went outside, and I couldn't believe it because I, I this is the only closest thing I have to close to wear out the cold is is my Bam Media sweatshirt. And oh oh, good news, good news. Michael Anthony is hard at work right now packaging up because our new shot glasses came in today, today. So everybody who's already ordered one. They're getting packaged up and it'll be delivered today. I've got to get him the list for everybody who wants you to go fund me and donate it so we can get those addresses and get all of you guys in there. I can't thank you guys enough. When I get back, we got more work to do on the set because we are under a month before the draft and we're going to be doing a Zoom call just like we did last year, but this year it's going to be bigger and better. You're going to see Philly 500 meltdown on a big screen. I mean a really big screen, although that, that might scare you. You might not want the kids to watch. You, you might it, it, That might be you know traumatic for them to see Philly 500, that face, you know, on that, that, that 55 inch screen. That, that might not be good. But anyway, as I've been driving through here and this is crazy because, you know, we came from Flagstaff, Arizona. I didn't know that that was like at 7,000 feet. That, that's probably the highest I've been. <laughs> yeah, that's the highest I've ever been at 7,000 feet. And we're kind of coming down slowly, gradually back down to earth and the temperature's warming up. And as I was driving through here, DMV sends me a text message. It's like, oh my God, Kyle Pitts did a 4440. You know, because he's been on the whole, we need Kyle Pitts. Let's get Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts, man. You know, and I'm like, dude, I need my defense to be better. So the only way I go ahead and say, you know, go for Kyle Pitts is if we're literally taking care of our defense. Okay. Now the Cowboys have done some of that stuff. But I still keep thinking, you know, Dalton Schultz, Blake Jarwin, collectively, the two of them are pretty good. But I will acknowledge this. One thing you have to look at in about the last five, six Super Bowls is they all have something in common. Besides having a really good quarterback, they've all had teams with great tight ends. In fact, I dare say the tight ends have gotten to be more important. What the heck is that? The meteor? No, that right there. It looks like it's kind of like a fountain in the middle of the desert or something. Oh, maybe that's like a gas thing. It's like a concrete thing, and you, you guys probably saw it over here. Oh, here. But, okay. And then we got a train up here that we're chasing. Anyway, they all have great tight ends. I mean, you think of like, you know, um, Dallas Goddard, of course, now with the Eagles, although he hasn't been a Super Bowl. But um, there are other, damn, that they're trying to trade now. He's kind of past his time. But you think about George Kettle, you think about. Um, uh, Celtic, you know, uh, you think about the Gronk, you think about teams, they have that great tight end. And so as we think about that, you know, they are game changers. And I dare say that tight ends are becoming as important, if not more important, than the wide receivers. So from that standpoint, all right, back to Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts, six foot six, two hundred and forty-five pounds. That's big. That's big. Running a four-four. Now you start. Yeah, the trains. Yeah, they got those double-decker ones. I want to see how long that sucker is. Um, Cause that's literally out here. Um, that's big for a tight end. And when you start thinking about a tight end being covered by a linebacker. A guy that's running 4-4 speed, that's a mismatch. I, I mean, you know, maybe I'm getting on the um, Kyle 
Pitt's bandwagon too. I mean, I, I, but I, I, it always worries me about a guy that seems to be overhyped, and he's been overhyped a lot. But as I think about this, at six foot six, two forty five, and running a four four, could this be actually a guy that you would change up? And instead of being that tight end, that maybe you end up using him as a wide receiver. Because you think about Calvin Johnson, Megatron. This guy, that's that's a big man that's moving. Now, understand, speed isn't the end-all, be-all in football players. Because there's guys that are lots of Hall of Famers that weren't that fast. Emmitt Smith wasn't exactly a speed guy, although he had a great offensive line, which helped. Um, you think about Jason Witten. Um, Jason Witten was slow as a turtle, and yet somehow, oh look at that, Moho. I mean Mojo Coffee Company. Damn, Mojo Coffee Company. Yeah, that might be a sign. Might be a sign. But you think about Jason Witten was never a tight end that had a whole lot of speed. He just knew how to run routes and be precise with it and be at the right place at the right time. So speed isn't necessarily a thing that you must have as a tight end. Um, I'd like to know what his blocking skills are. I don't really know that much about him. But you think about the red zone, you think about the mismatches, that could actually be a, a, a really cool thing. I, DMV, I, I hear you talking. I hear you talking. The question will be, would he be there by the time the Cowboys pick? And we think that probably five quarterbacks will be taken to the top ten. So that means there's only four other players that are going to be picked other than quarterbacks before us. I don't know. It's going to have to see how this thing rolls. The thing that might be interesting, too, is um, after seeing the 49ers trade up to the third spot to try and get a quarterback, some of these other teams that are thinking later on that we might be able to get one of these guys falling may look differently, and all of a sudden you think about a team like um, Atlanta that's sitting there at number four um, might be somebody that they'll trade up to to get to that position so that way they can try and get one of these quarterbacks. The sad thing will be is when you look at the past numbers of quarterbacks that are drafted, past numbers, very few times that we had more than two or three quarterbacks that end up being really good quarterbacks. Think about the draft that um, RG3, RG3 and Andrew Luck were drafted in. Okay, you know, so you had Andrew Luck as the number one pick. You had RG3 as the number two pick. Andrew Luck had some success, but of course his career is over with. RG3 was rookie of the year, but then nothing after that. The best quarterback for that draft was actually Russell Wilson. And then you look at, you know, who was uh, second round or third, second round pick. And you look at Kirk Cousins, and I'm not saying Kirk Cousins had a lot of success, but he was a fourth round pick. That's it from that draft, and that draft was actually one of those ones you say was a pretty good quarterback draft. Um, so as we get into this draft, and five quarterbacks taken in the top ten, if we get two of those quarterbacks actually having staying power, that would be a miracle. So three of those teams, more than likely, are going to still end up being quarterback needy teams. That's one thing about football. You uh, ain't got a quarterback, you're constantly trying to get one. And Jimmy Garoppolo is available if you want him. You just have to knock the 49er socks off. And Sean Watson, too. The Texans are admitting, yeah, we're okay trying to move a guy who's got 19 lawsuits against him. Yeah. All right, y'all. We're going to keep on rolling down the road. And who knows what we'll see next. Uh, there was a meteor site somewhere over there, but we didn't know how far off the road it was. So uh, I've seen a crater like in uh, south of Petersburg, Virginia, from the uh, Civil War. It's just kind of like an indentation in the ground. I, I think the meteor is gone, so it's not much to say. Hope you guys are having a fantastic. Is it Tuesday or Wednesday? What day is it? Tuesday? Okay. What day?
days? Oh, I'm going to see. Oh, it's, it's hump day. Oh, heck, we're getting over the hump. All right, see you later. Peace.